Okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, the menus, and there's not too many menus right now in this uh, particular release. Uh, more may be coming in the future. But many of these uh, elements require a canvas, and you'll see like this one doesn't have a canvas built into it. And so for this example, I am using the shooter package, and I just, just opened up one of my example scenes. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a canvas and I'm going to say I want to show that before everything um, and then let's dive into the simple selection menu so this simple selection menu um, is just like it says uh, the very first thing that it's going to do is it's going to uh, require you to input your name uh, and it will save your name that you use so next time you open up the application your name will be populated here and then the next one is when you click confirm, it'll bring you to this other menu. Let's have a look at it. Um, that will require you to input the IP address or DNS name of the server you want to join. You click join server and it will join. And if you fail, it'll bring you back to this page. Um, so now let's have a look at some of the scripts that are attached to this. And again, you'll see the player name input is right here. And the server join settings are right here. So you can take these individual elements and you can put them into your own custom UI, or you can just use this for testing purposes. And you can see how, how I do that here. So the UI value storage, this is where, um, just like the name suggests, values will be stored that will be referenced by other scripts. So if we look at the player name input settings, for example, um, it, it might store the name in this value storage here, or, um, you know, the client join button might might store a value in the UI value storage. So this is um, basically a reference point for other scripts. Then I start getting into some generics that are a little bit easier to understand. Uh, this client network manager, uh, just like all of these things suggest, it will just fire these events based on uh, client actions. So when a, a local client is started or stopped, or when you have successfully connected to a server. And a client is specific to the individual's game. Um, and then a server is specific to, well, the server. And right now I only have two events uh, that you can tie into. You can tie into an event when the server is started or when the server is stopped. And you'll see that when the server is stopped, it shows this page. Uh, but when the server is started, it basically turns off the UI completely. And then this one, when the client is stopped, it will turn on the server settings, uh, but when the client is connected, it will turn off the uh, UI. Um, and then if we dive into the player name settings, this player name field, uh, and then the confirm button, this is what will actually um, change your name uh, in your client. Um, when, your, when your client connects, um, this name will be, uh, this is how it changes that name. Um, and then let's just have a look through here and you'll see it's all um, taken care of for you. You'll see that there's even not anything in here because this script will automatically tie in everything that it needs uh, automatically for you in these uh, name input fields. So basically all this, all this does is says it will take the input and when you click confirm, it will send that name to the server and that is the name that will be assigned to your character. And then the client join button is very self-explanatory. You have the input field that you input your IP or DNS name. And then when you click the join button, it will set that uh, IP or DNS name on the network manager and initiate a join server to that endpoint. And then it will, uh, underlying mirror logic, will it will try uh, a certain number of times. And if it fails every single time, it'll uh, you know, your client will basically get disconnected, which triggers to show this server join menu again. Uh, but that is it for the simple selection menu.